Welcome to the first ever Pro Chess League Beyond the Board interview session. We are here with the Bottom Bottom Snowballs, one of the teams on their way to the Pro Chess League live finale in San Francisco, May 4th and 5th. Snowballs, how are you? Hello. Hi, Danny. We're great. Hello. Thanks. Hello, Danny. Looking forward hey. to it. Thank you. Thank you for being here, all of you. We have a, a number of questions we prepared to kind of help the fans and all of us get to know each other a little better. And uh, on that note, I wanted to say that, first of all, you guys are, you guys are a team that's been in the league from, from the beginning. But of all four teams heading to the finals, you guys are actually the only team that hasn't been there before. Uh, ironically, I guess all three of these teams were there last year. Do you feel like that gives you an advantage or a disadvantage heading into San Francisco with, with fresh eyes? Uh, Anybody with, can take it. I suppose the team manager should start. Spoken uh, like a future team manager right there. <laughs> well, that's an interesting question, of course. I mean, this is not our first time in the final, to be fair, because in the first year we did make it um, to the semifinals. Um, but back then they were a bit different. So we do have some experience, but uh, at the same time, I mean, the finals are quite similar to playoff matches. Mm -hmm. So I would say that we, we have plenty of experience when it comes to those by now. Um, but, well, of course, we are uh, very much looking forward to the finals. And we have not played these teams before. And that is, of course, interesting to us. OK. Uh, I'll go next, be uh, because I actually have a qu quite a different view on that, because um, well, we, d uh, we did make it to the finals for the first time. And from what I saw from last year and uh, also from the uh, the year before that, uh, yeah, actually the year before that, w w was the finals also an eSports event? I, d I don't remember. No, actually. it was not. No, last okay, year but, but was the but first ever Last year it final, was, yeah. and uh, this year it's also going to be from what I understand. And um, it doesn't really feel or play out like a chess tournament from what I saw. And I think y you need some time getting used to this. So. I would say in the maybe first half an hour, an hour, or however long it takes uh, for us to get used to the atmosphere, it, it is probably going to be slightly unusual. But uh, okay, I mean, we have our team spirit and our strength to compensate for it. So we, uh, I think we're all set. Does that make you more excited or more nervous knowing that you're going to be playing in a, in a live environment where people are much louder than they are normally at a, at a chess tournament? Well, I think uh, I am actually actually looking forward to this because um, it is it is a fresh experience and um, well uh, I, I'm, I'm going to be in the middle of it and uh, it's it sounds like it like it might be fun of course as with most chess tournaments it depends on how you play but um, beforehand it, it seems like a good idea right well uh, we have a lot of questions here and this is going to be a, a fun session to, to really help to get to know you guys we have questions for all of you and I, I'm actually going to jump to the the only person we haven't heard from yet Dimitri Kolars who uh, uh, you had a great season I think uh, for many people you were one of the one of the slightly lesser known names I think for the general chess audience who was performing consistently week in and week out um, and one of the questions we actually had for you was that your performance rating was actually a hundred points higher than your than your fee day this season do you feel like that's a testament to this format being uh, rather rather suited for you, the rapid format? Are you more even more comfortable in the online format? Or is um, or is it just a sign of the fact that you're getting stronger as a chess player and maybe maybe your FIDE rating just needs to catch up to your real strength? Um, yeah, I, I really like the format. Um, I play a lot online, especially on chess.com, a lot of Blitz, so I was very motivated. And also my... Uh, feeder rating is a bit higher now than I think I started with 2530 or something and 2570 uh, so so it's not that much of a gap so yeah but also I was just uh, very motivated to play and yeah. 
What do you think about the time control? You say you play a lot online, you play a lot on chess.com, but probably I'm guessing you don't play a lot of 15-2 or 10-2 time controls in your casual game. So it still is a little bit unique, I guess, even for um, comparing to whatever setting. Online, a lot of grandmasters play blitz or bullet. Over the board chess, you're not playing that time control. Do you feel like this rapid format is, is just the right amount of high-quality chess with exciting time scrambles where someone like you is very well suited? Yeah, the the increment makes it much much easier for me. Um, yeah, the time control was completely new, but uh, yeah, I managed to uh, find my rhythm there. Well, Georg and Ina, you guys get credit, I guess, for finding uh, Dimitri and adding him to your to your roster. And and I have a, a two part question there. Are there uh, what were your thoughts in, in, in building the, the consistent lineup you did where Dimitri was, was very much a part of that week in and week out? But also, what's the hardest job of being a manager in the Pro Chess League that would surprise people besides dealing with Greg? Besides <laughs> dealing with Greg, what is the hardest part of being a Pro Chess League manager that people wouldn't know? Uh, I'm going to ask Jorg first, and then Ina takes the second one. Okay. Um, the recruiting was quite easy because, first of all, we needed to basically fill a new team moving to Germany. And Dimitri and Alexander are playing with me on the same Bundesliga team. So I simply tried to find out during one Bundesliga weekend who would be motivated to play. And that was it. And I believe in all the guys on our team and, well, there, there were no second thoughts. And of course, I'm happy that Dimitri is doing well. Um, I think he generally underestimates himself. So to me, it's no surprise at all that he has been playing well. Sometimes he thinks he is actually not doing well, but that's just testament to his ambitions. And and the hardest part of being a manager before Ina gives her answer? <laughs> um, logistics can be extremely tricky. I mean, as you see, we we couldn't choose, you know, from our whole lineup in, in who comes to San Francisco. Anyways, we are happy. But I mean, from week to week, also there are a lot of challenges. Sometimes to get four people to play is not easy at all. Ina, your thoughts? Yeah, the log logistical part is, of course, the second biggest challenge because uh, this year we had a team with players who actually play a lot over the board. So they were quite busy playing other tournaments since it was a busy season. And the, that created some challenges. Um, so I would say the planning is like the biggest part, getting people, uh, getting people who are available. And OK, it's a bit tricky to feel the team with the requirements because you have to look at a lot of feeder ratings. I've spent a lot of time looking at rating lists and trying to combine make different combinations, who could play and so on. Um, right. Some of the ideas were more reasonable. Some of, some of the ideas were, of course, rest, less reasonable over the year. But yeah, but I'm very happy with the team we have. Uh, I mean, we have learned that it's important to take people that we trust in a way and that we know because that makes it so much easier. Do you, do you and Georg ever have disagreements about who about the lineup or who you want to play that week? And does that ever does that ever come home with you guys? You guys ever got to battle that out? Or do you are you just are you just going to put your foot down and tell him that you know the lineup better? Um, well, we do have discussions about who is going to play uh, for various reasons. Um, I have a better overview of who is available to play, so. Um, some discussions are very simple, like we want to play someone who is not available and so on. Right. Other discussions are a bit different because, I mean, it's a, a little bit about intuition, who would perform better against a certain team, who has been performing better over the season and so on. Well, you guys have a, have a unique environment there managing a team and, and obviously, you know, managing your marriage and your team at the same time. That sounds good. But speaking of interesting home lives, uh, Alexander, I have to ask you. When was the last time your dad beat you in a chess game? Um, you mean a tournament over the board game? A tournament or or um, at home? Uh, at home, I don't know. Quite possibly in, in some blitz session a couple of months ago. But over the board, we usually 
used to make draws when we still played against each other. He once beat me in a simultaneous exhibition that he gave when I was 10 years old. Okay. I, 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 don't, I don't think any of other, our other games were decisive after that. So, <laughs> does, he, uh, does he remind you of that now that you've leapfrogged him? For those who don't know, uh, Alexander's father, an international master, um, and uh, certainly probably had something to do with your chess career, right? Uh, d definitely played a big part in it uh, because I basically have a coach at home whenever I want him. Um, but uh, of course, he doesn't really well. He doesn't really mind that I surpassed him. He's happy about, about it, and he's yeah. help he's helping me whenever he can. So, is is that is that something that you think is uh, uniquely gave you an advantage in in the sense that um, you have a coach at home, and and does that at times make him harder on you if you have if you have mistakes or have tough times, or does that make him pretty much always just more understanding because he knows how difficult it can be to to play chess at that level. Um. It is actually like that. Uh, he um, he doesn't re uh, he 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 can't really relax when I play, and also he al always has his own thoughts on my games and what I should do do better. Uh, but of course, it is an advantage if I'm willing to listen, because um, well, not many people have this opportunity, and still, right. uh, it's not so easy to uh, make the the best of it because. Um, I sometimes feel quite lazy about uh, doing some serious work because, uh, especially in the past when I was st still playing worse than him, because I thought, okay, worst case, I can always ask my father about something. Now it's it's it has of course changed, but um, still, I think uh, it it is qu qu uh, quite a v valuable thing for me. Uh, do you do you still live at home? You said you're from Moscow. You you uh, now live in Germany. You speak impeccable English. Uh, what, what is your father? Are you still at home with your parents, or you live on your own? Uh, yes, I live at home with my parents, and uh, frankly, I have no desire to move out because I already travel a lot, and it's uh, <laughs> actually good to come to come home for, uh, once in a while. Yeah, I bet, and uh, I mean that's got to be convenient too, having mom and dad around. If you're traveling, you don't have to worry about the house as much, right? <laughs> I guess get to focus on playing chess. So, um, so many directions we want this interview to go. I'm, uh, I'm definitely not going to get to all the questions we have here, but um, one of the uh, the other. One, let's bring it back to the finals. You guys, you guys are looking forward to San Francisco. Um, if, if you're willing to share what your planned lineup is, I think the fans would like to hear that. And, of course, we are going to be asking all the other teams the same to reveal. Um, and then a follow-up question for Ina and Georg, starting with the question about the lineup, is why do you think this lineup presents your best opportunity to beat Xiangdu and, and to move on to the championship? We won't reveal the lineup until everyone has given their lineup, I promise. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the thing with the lineup is uh, we bring only four players to down the call right now, since we actually we couldn't even physically get the fifth person who was available. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the lineup right after here. After we won the second playoff match, uh, quite quickly we realized that we are facing some problems in, in uh, actually fielding a team, but we were fortunate that everyone, I mean, we could find four players who were available to go and willing to go and boom it. Possible, so. Well, um, how do you think you four then stack up against Xiangdu if this is the this is the lineup we're planning on? And um, I assume it's Georg on board one, Alexander well, on board two. Rating, so it's not really optional. Okay, got it, got okay. it. That's right. Unless the rules have changed, it should be according to rating. I, I I've learned to stop talking about the rules because I'm par apparently I'm not paying enough attention to it, and and Greg and Nick get mad at me, so I'm just going to say that you know the rules better than me. Um, so wh how do you think your team stacks up against Xiangdu? Obviously, it's it's a live final, it's a time control you're familiar with in the Pro Chess League, but if it's an eight eight tie, how do you guys uh, feel you would stack up in the in the uh, elimination sort of ladder playoff style as well? What are your thoughts on looking forward to the whole format? Speaking mainly to Georg and Ina first. Oh, I mean, any match is a one-shot game. I mean, it doesn't really matter if you think you're the favorite or the underdog. Anyone who goes there has a chance. I mean, all the teams could, uh, in the end, be the champion. And all we can do is to, you know, try to be in a good mood, sleep well for a couple of days, arrive uh, rested, and try to play our best games. And about the 8-8 scenario, I'm probably not even going to think about that. 
it means it might come down to you versus one of the top boards for China, presumably someone like Li Chao, Wang Yue. What are your thoughts on that? No, no, I think Dimitri is going to stop everyone. Oh, okay. That, that's a <laughs> good answer. There you go. There you go. Um, well, speaking of being in a good mood, you guys will be visiting the Bay Area, the Golden City, San Francisco. Any thoughts on sightseeing? And, and a question for all four of you. Have you been to San Francisco before? And are you going to be doing anything outside of the finals to enjoy the city? Okay, I'll go first then. I have okay. never been even to the United States. That's my first trip. And uh, okay, obviously I will spend a few days in San Francisco, so I will most likely uh, go sightseeing. I don't know how much, but um, I, I hope to, to have some reasonably qualified guides with uh, Georg and Ina, maybe. And uh, okay, we'll see how it goes, but, uh, but basically I'm happy that there will be a few days to, let's say, re relax and not go crazy about the, about the matches. What about you, Dimitri? Um, yeah, for me, it's also the first time in the US, so I want to see it uh, as much as I can. And yeah, definitely do some sightseeing. Georganina, I assume you guys have been to San Francisco before. Uh, yes, we have a couple of times. So we are uh, looking into what we will do. Uh, we will have a couple of days uh, there to do sightseeing. So we are currently preparing, so to say. Well, you, you've never, you've been to San Francisco. You've probably never been to Twitch headquarters, though. Obviously, Twitch being our, our partner in, in organizing a lot of what we do here with the Pro Chess League and, and the, the eSports fo format. I wanna, I'm, I'm saying that to preface a uh, question coming back to, again, how difficult it is to be a manager knowing that what you're balancing is trying to build and create the best rosters possible, knowing that the Pro Chess League is still very brand new. It's, an, it's often inconvenient, to be totally frank, right, for, for players to fit into their busy schedules and to play at sometimes late times. But there's a very exciting element to the fact that it is uh, the first ever attempt to sort of legitimize and create a, a, a global league that, that can run in this way via the esports style. So what are your thoughts as chess professionals on uh, the Pro Chess League and um, the the... I guess the joy that you have in it, and what are your thoughts on, on, on what the league needs to continue to do to legitimize itself and be considered the top priority for chess professionals over, over maybe some of the other tournaments that you fight them for with logistics. So I'm going to ask you, Alexander, how you feel about competing in the Pro Chess League first, move on to Dimitri, and what your thoughts are on the, the overall global chess esports kind of idea that we're trying to do here. Um, all right. Uh... The very first thing that comes to mind is, um, I, well, it's my first season in the Pro Chess League, so uh, I'm actually happy to get uh, rapid games against uh, usually quite strong opposition. Okay, uh, every team has at least one Grandmaster, sometimes two or three. So um, that's definitely a plus. Um, what they could do to legitimize it, that's actually quite hard. Because, uh, okay, uh, the way it, it runs now, it. Um, it is a very nice thing, and um, I actually like to play every opportunity that I get, which were not not so many this year because, uh, like Garrick said, uh, I was one of those who played a lot of tournaments. Um, but you'll be but, playing in the match that matters most, I guess, in San Francisco. So, there yes, you go. okay, because like, again, like Garrick said, we only have four players who are available. So, um, it, um, I'm not quite sure, but uh, okay. Uh, Obviously, to be to be very direct, uh, there there's a, there's a foolproof way to uh, make a tournament important. That's pump more money into it. That's right. Yeah. But uh, okay. I, Actually, I'm going to ask this question yeah. to every player on every team, and I assume that'll be a popular answer. But I'm always curious to hear people's thoughts. Yeah. No, but I actually think that for a rapid online league, it's um, not really necessary f uh, to have a lot of cash in it because. Um, well, for, for, at, at least for me, it is interesting in itself. And um, as long as the, the, uh, every team has, a let's say, a reasonable number of players, uh, at least, I don't know, eight, nine, whatever we have, uh, so that they can feel the team every week, uh, it is quite interesting. And um, I think, uh, OK, there are probably many improvements that that you can come up with on your end. I'm not a, not an expert on this one. but. Um, I, re I really think that the, the way it is now, it is actually working quite well because it is interesting and it's probably also interesting for amateurs to follow the league with, uh, especially with your commentary so <laughs> well thank you i appreciate that uh, that's uh 
That's, I wasn't expecting that, but yeah, okay. Uh, Dimitri, your thoughts on it? Um, okay, first of all, I'm, I'm happy that uh, there's the Pro Chess League that uh, eSport, uh, Chess as eSport is growing, and I play most of my chess games on, uh, online anyway, so for me it's great. Um, yeah, in, in, in Germany, for example, it's just not, not very known, the Pro Chess League. Uh, most chess players, players I know um, don't know the Pro Chess League, so yeah, maybe we just have to make a bit more publicity, especially in Germany. Yeah. Well, and I know I'm asking a question that comes with a follow-up for, I'll let Georg need to answer it. Ger Germany itself, I think, is historically, uh, okay, well, there's the Bundesliga, which is, I think, one of the longest established chess team events, right, that happens every year. Um, there, uh, along with things like the European Club Cup. But overall, I think Germany has a rich history of, of team chess play, club play with the Bundesliga. And so do you feel like that is actually a potential advantage for, for Germany in future years in the, in the Pro Chess League? Um, and of course, I know you haven't answered my first question yet. Sorry, go ahead, Georg. Actually, for both of these questions, I would probably have to write an essay to give you a proper Yeah, I, yeah you could. I'm sure you could. <laughs> um, I mean, at the very beginning, I was a bit skeptical about everything connected to chess.com, the Pro Chess League, and so on. But I mean, like six, seven years ago, because I was basically a typical case. I hadn't really heard about the site until I was living and studying in the US. And so I understand what it looks like in Germany for most people. There are really many people who like to play online, who follow chess news. And somehow the awareness is not at the level that it should be. I'm quite sure there are things we can do on our end to improve it, but of course not from one day to another. And I'm thinking about this. That's why I'm saying I should be writing an essay. Mm -hmm. because there are really many layers to this question, many aspects to, you know, use as an angle. Um, about the attractivity of the league itself. I think most players who take part see it in a similar way as Alexander described. It's a good way to get an opportunity to practice against strong opposition. I mean, it's basically like having training matches and you don't need to leave your house, so it's extremely convenient. And a lot of people do follow the league. I mean, whenever I go to play over the board chess, Someone approaches me and asks me, ah, you were playing this match against Khan and so on, and this and this was interesting, and, you know. So I, I can see that there is awareness. And certainly you, you can build on that. You know? Uh, well, I think that this partnership that Chess.com has with Twitch is really great because, uh, well, it helps Chess.com grow, it helps the Pro Chess League, because even for people who may not be as involved with chess, they will know what Twitch is. I mean, as soon as I mention it uh, to other people, oh, Twitch, that immediately strikes people's interest. And they know what it is, they know what it means, that it gets this kind of coverage. And uh, so that is, I think, really important and very good in terms of making the league more popular. But of course, in Europe, as Georg said, uh, it's not so well known, although it is getting better and more and more people follow it, and more people write about it. So, but well, there's more we can do on our end. And uh, one more thing, Germany stands out a little bit with the structure of its population. I mean, Germany's population is relatively old and generally Germany is a conservative country. So this in itself... No no politics here, Georg, no. Yeah, no, no, just in itself, it means that something like the Pro Chess League will move in much slower than maybe, let's say, in France, for example. Well, do you think it's possible that um, a Pro Chess League championship team from Baden-Baden and -Baden in, in Germany might help might help with some of the attention if, if that team happened to win the whole thing this year? Yeah, also we have a unique environment here in Baden-Baden. I mean, if we are successful, then of course uh, the, our surroundings with the Granke company will take also more interest in so, like promoting the fact that we play in, in the Pro Chess League. Well, obviously, we're we're uh, wishing you guys the best of luck and hopeful that it indeed brings more attention, not just to the league, but to the snowballs and to the entire uh, 
culture there in, uh, in, in Germany to be a little bit more aware of, of what's going on here with your guys' success. Um, only a couple more questions I have here, but overall, you guys have already put together what's a, a pretty impressive campaign this year. You only lost two matches this year by a total of two points. Both matches you lost were eight and a half to seven and a half in the scoreboard. Um, without going week by week, can you guys take me through a little bit of what you feel your journey was to get to San Francisco and the fact that you've been able to be so consistent? Um, what, what is that a measure to? Is that a testament that you guys maybe just kind of uh, got lucky with, with some, of the, some of the lineups this year? Or do you feel like that was part of your plan that allowed you guys to be so consistent and, um, and be one of the top performing teams overall heading into San Francisco? Ina? Um, well, we were very fortunate with uh, the team that we uh, picked for this year because uh, it's a very good team with a lot of very good people and uh, clearly a lot of the players managed to perform well and that helped us a lot. Okay, we were a bit lucky in some cases. The first playoff match did not look the best going into the final round, for example, but uh, I mean, with the team effort, we still managed to take care of that one. And that was maybe um, the biggest obstacle going into the playoff. But it's okay, we faced some obstacles over the season. Not all matches went the way we wanted to, and the Battle Royale was clearly a very good way to shake things up. <laughs> so, uh, you you yeah. didn't say that with the most positive tone of liking the Battle Royale. Your thought on the Battle Royale format. Ina, go ahead. Um, it's an interesting format, but I mean, depending on which group you get into, some teams have it easier than others. So mm -hmm. it does become a bit uneven, which you could also see. And since it's for so many points, it does play a role for, right. for teams. But I mean, the format itself, okay, it's faster and you get to play the teams from the other divisions that you don't get to play normally. That's of course very good. So, I mean, overall, it's a good invention. It can just you, be improved. You mentioned that you guys didn't have the best situation in the last round. Uh, sorry, the, the, going to the last set of games in the first round of the playoffs. And you mentioned with a team effort. I think chess is historically such an individual game that I always wonder how certain chess players will respond to the team environment. I, I, do you think it's fair to say that some players maybe play better in the team environment with the expectations of... Uh, their teammates, and then maybe others maybe struggle in that format because I think part of being a great chess player is focusing on what you got to do and not worrying about other things. I'm going to ask that to everybody. Alexander, do you feel like you do better in the team environment? Um, do, you, do you like this sort of format, or do you feel like the team element and being accountable to teammates is sometimes even more difficult than a normal chess tournament? Um, from my personal experience, <clears throat> I think I am doing quite well in team competitions. I play in the German league now for, for Georg's team uh, and also in France and usually I do quite well there but of course um, it's not a classic team competition in that sense somehow because um, first of all it's a uh, rapid and I don't think I've ever played uh, in a rapid team competition before, before the Pro Chess League. Uh, so you you don't you don't you don't really get the time to get uh, get yourself an overview of the whole match and see okay this position is probably going to end in a draw so I don't need to take risks or something like that. Um, but generally, I think for for me it, it works out quite well to play in a team and I think there are players like that who uh, actually I think we have at least two of them on our team. Uh, uh, Georg and Dimitri. I think uh, those are just the kind of players who somehow. Maybe, maybe especially when they play for a team, they don't really do badly. They they might not do phenomenally, but uh, s s sometimes they do, and sometimes they j just do okay. Sometimes they do really well. So uh, I think uh, players like these, uh, it just boosts your confidence as a player. Uh, for instance, when I uh, played in this, uh, I played in this first uh, play playoff match against uh, Amsterdam, and I was doing quite miserably. I think I scored one and a half out of four in the end. But I wasn't uh, going to remind you. I wasn't going to remind you. But no, go no, ahead. it's. It's fine. It's fine. If if you want, I have a whiny excuse ready, but I'm going to save it. <laughs> okay. uh, any, anyway, um, it's uh, just um, if if you see that Garrick is just destroying the opposition there, uh, it it shows you that uh, you, you you really can pull it off because uh, your team is, is still hanging in there, and um, sometimes this is just what you need.
And is that even help even helpful in, in specific concrete ways? Meaning you see someone like Jorg is crushing it. Maybe now the fact that you're struggling, you're okay with just sort of holding for a draw. You don't feel desperate to try to get a win, right? You can you can kind of uh, stop the bleeding, if you will, even when you're not playing your best chess. Is that kind of what you're saying? Um, what I'm saying is probably, uh, actually, again, to come back to this match, um, we were, I think, trailing for most of the match. Um, and we only made the comeback in the last uh, in the last set of games, and um, I think the first if, for me personally the first game I won the second I lost and I lost so unbelievably I uh, I went for a line and blundered something there and I just couldn't believe that I was losing. Uh, after that, I also lost the third one quite badly. And uh, in these situations, sometimes when you're trailing uh, uh, in the match and you um, well, you yourself are doing badly. It's very easy to say, okay, like I'm going to play on and see what happens. And it's, uh, well, m maybe it works out, maybe not. But the thing is, probably it won't work out if you uh, get into that mindset. But but if you see that, uh, again, someone like Georg is, uh, is is really still trying to pull it off and uh, there is still hope, you, you, you somehow get to push yourself uh, out of that hole. Makes sense, yeah. Dimitri, how do you feel about the team environment in terms of it bringing the best or worst out of out of your chess play? Yeah, I I agree with uh, Alexander. Um, okay, just improves my play, <laughs> I think. Uh, as I said, I'm very motivated in such uh, team events. I play with strong players, and then yeah, I have to show something. Yeah, in the Bundesliga, it's the same. It's my first season, and uh, in the Dietzio team was yeah. For example, Georg and Alexander and other strong, strong players, and yeah, uh, I'm also always eager to to perform well. So, um, and also, I'm I think I'm playing well in must-win situa situations, and we had a lot of these uh, this season. We had some late comebacks, and we had to win every game or something in the end. Yeah, and then we often managed. Yeah, and you, and you did play well in those situations, and you feel like the team environment maybe helped you play even better. And that and those must win situations. Yes, for sure. Yeah, Georg, what are you? What, what are your thoughts on that? I think you can hear it from what both Alexander and Dimitri already said that yeah. they have faith in the team, and this is basically the most important ingredient to a team success. Because if you think, yeah, I mean, we're strong enough, we can still pull it off, even if you yourself are not doing so well then it pushes you to, to do what you can still and not let yourself go. And about myself, I can say that probably playing for a team is very well suited to my style of play because I play well when I just play, you know, relatively clean chess. But when I play for myself, sometimes I want to be someone else. I want to play more principled, more aggressive and so on. And then I start to lose more games and I do things that I maybe shouldn't do. But when I play for the team, I'm like, okay, let's, let's um, stick to what you do well, and this is what I do. No, no messing around when you've got other people yeah. looking at you, relying on you. Yeah, it makes sense. You know, what do you think about, about this, uh, the team aspect of you, both as a manager and a player, right? You see it bring out the best in your, in your players, and do you look for that in people you put in the lineup, people that you think are, are, are even better in that format? Uh, yes, of course. I mean, this is a factor because uh, one way or the other, it's still a team event. So this factor is important. But I have a lot of faith in the players that I play every week. Um, the, that is very important to me because, well, I always believe that they're going to do well. So I have complete trust in that they're doing their best. And then we will see where it takes us. In my experience, uh, a lot of people tend to be able to pull themselves together in various ways when they play for for a team, and that matters. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, I um, I admit I've, I've lost complete track of time here. I have no longer. We've been we've been apparently going for just over thirty thirty minutes, which feels feels fun to me. Time flies when you're having fun. Um, I hope I hope this has been fun for you guys. I know this is a little bit of a different format to be interviewed as, as a group here, but we're, um, we're greatly looking forward to, to see how the snowballs can perform in the finals. Uh, we know you guys will, will have a, uh, a very good and uh, tough matchup right away in facing Shangdu. Um, but let me ask you, should you make it past uh, the, uh, the pandas, 
who would you rather face in the championship? St. Louis, uh, the Archbishops, or the defending champion Armenia Eagles? Last question, I promise. Dimitri, who do you who who would you rather face? Um, I feel like you I feel like you were ready to answer that. I think we're we are underdogs in in both cases, but um, yeah, I would I would like to play against some world class players. So I guess St. Louis, but okay, Armenia would also be a nice challenge. So it's a choice of playing, I guess, against someone like Fabiano on board one, or or dethroning the champions yourself, right? Given that the Eagles are are the defending the defending champs, so um, you, you, but you'd still probably rather face St. Louis if you had to choose. Yeah, yeah, I like playing against strong players, and uh, I would. So. Well, who do you think you have a better chance against? Not to talk any trash or anything, but who do you think you guys stack up better against? Who who would you? Uh, uh, maybe also against St. Louis because um, I think Armenia has a lot of uh, very underrated players, so. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's very tough. And I heard that St. Louis is not playing with uh, CISO and, and Fabiano Cavana, so, so maybe we have a chance there. Okay. Well, Ina, you'll be playing, so I'll ask you next. As a player and manager, who would you rather face in the championship? Uh, the Bishops. Bishop, wow, that was decisive. Uh, why? Um, well, we have... Why? Um... Well, they um, are not able to bring their strongest team uh, since Wesley So is not available, uh, which, I mean, increases the chances. Uh, so it's simply like that. While Armenia has been doing really well and they are a tough team. Okay. Jorg, what do you think? Uh, from the moment I saw that Armenia signed up to play a qualifier to get into the Pro Chess League last year, I knew that they are going to be very serious contenders to win the whole thing. So I've seen the Armenians play in the national team. I've played against them various times. And they are all fighters in a positive sense. And you can never like uh, relax uh, when you play them in a team event. So. From my own personal experience, I like not to cross words with them. Okay. Well, there you go. We got three for St. Louis. Alexander, you're the last man standing. Your thoughts? Uh, first, uh, I have a question for you. Who is usually oh. board two for Armenia? I forgot that. So Zavid Andriasian has been has been number one consistently. Yeah. Um, there's been both Hike Matiriasian, um, yeah. and then you have Sean Sargisian on board three normally. Okay. Um, Honor Sargisian on board for I. I actually don't know for sure who their board two is, but I believe they're planning on bringing Hike uh, Materialsion, the uh, the youngster. Okay. Well. Um, okay. Uh, objectively, I think there's n nothing going for facing Armenia be because, as already the people here said, uh, Saint Louis is playing without Wesley. So, uh, I believe it, it crosses with some tournament, right? Because otherwise, yes. yeah, yeah, the, people the wouldn't first, be so sure. The first leg of the Grand Chess Tour, yeah. Okay. Um, no, actually, there's no logical reason for me to say that. But uh, I just, uh, if 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 I had to play them tomorrow, I would like to play Armenia. But it's uh, it's t totally t just intuitive, and uh, I can't really c claim to have any sensible reason for it. Okay. Well, you know, I follow my feelings first and my head second all the time too. So I'm with you. I, I support that, but um, we will be following uh, all of you very, very closely. Can't wait to see you all in San Francisco. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Um, look forward to seeing uh, how, how people respond to getting to know you all a little bit better. Um, wishing you the, the absolute best of, best of luck and that you play good chess even better in, in San Francisco. Um, and uh, we, will, we will catch up with the snowballs on media day, I guess. Uh, opening day, Friday, May 3rd, before the action kicks off on May 4th. So thank you for being here, and uh, good luck to all of you. Thank you, Denny. Thank you.